In this episode, we're going to be focusing on deleting a component from an entity in our ECS system. Uh, and that way, we won't get that component if we query for it. Uh, so for example, let's say we have this first entity right here, which we can see from the map, is player one. So if we want to remove the size from him and basically just make that nothing at all, uh, then what we need to do is change our map to be a five, right? Because health, which is this number, so that's four, uh, plus locations, which is one, that's a, that's a five, okay. Um, now, if we're just updating the map and our queries are using the map to determine which of the components to check, then we don't actually need to set this to a none. Uh, we can leave this be as a 10. All we have to do is update our map. Uh, and then that's going to allow us, like the query should still work appropriately. Uh, we don't have to spend time uh, then updating things when we don't really need to. Uh, that would probably be more for if we want to add a component in, which will be a future video. So with that, let's go ahead and write some tests and uh, see if we can get this working. So uh, in here, we're going to write a integration test. Function, we should be able to add component to entity. Uh, we're probably going to need to return a result. All right, so what do we need to do to actually get this to work here? Uh, we're going to, well, first of all, we have to create a world so that it's world new. Um, once we've created the new world, then we need to register some components. Well, we already have these potential components here, so location and size. Let's do world.registerComponents, location, and we'll just do size as well. Okay, so we have location and size registered in here uh let's go ahead and create an entity and then we'll we'll change we'll like um we'll see about what we need to do to actually like delete this uh so world dot uh create entity with component um Okay, so our component is going to be this location. So location, let's do like a dot zero, dot zero with component, and we'll have the size, which is maybe like a ten zero. Okay, um, perhaps it would be good for us to create two of these entities just so we can make sure that we're changing the correct one. So maybe we can be like 20. All of these. Okay, so now I have two entities in this world. So if I want to delete a component from one of these, so the components in question would probably be maybe like the location. I want to delete the location of like our, our first entity, let's say. So right here. Now, right now we know that the mask is gonna be one plus two, so it's gonna be three. Uh, and then both of them have three as, as our uh, map. But how do we know which one to delete? Because like I can maybe call like a world.delete component. Uh, I'm gonna have to pass in like the ID of the component that I want to to delete, which means I need an ID back. You know, if we have, um, uh, I wonder if we can like have a component ID that's automatically grabbed in, maybe, or maybe when we do our queries, we can get the ID back already, which would be the index, right? So 
if we can get the true index of the component, then that would that would help us a lot. So let, let's think about this. Like how how would how would this work? What if we have our world register a component behind the scenes index? Would that would that be a good idea? I don't know if it would be. Um, what if our query just returns instead of this vector of vectors? What if that returns the uh, the indexes? Uh, potentially that could help out. We could also potentially change it to have like a tuple type or a um, or a struct like in here where we have this like RC. Uh, what if we like made that be a struct with like the data, the query data? So it's like, you know, data RC. Um, but then we have like the index in there too. It's possible too. I don't know how helpful that is. Um, the other thing is we could just return a tuple and have that be the index in there as well, which might be, which might actually be really helpful. So I think we need to update our query to return this, this tuple here. Uh, so that way, essentially, we do query dot dot one, query dot one, to get at this. Now you're going to yell at us because this isn't a tuple, so you can't index inside of there. Yeah, this unknown field. So let's go ahead and fix our queries, so that way they pass these tests. Uh, all right, so entity query. So for inner loop here, uh, updating. Okay, so we're gonna run the query. Oh, creating the entities. Here's our query. Okay, query result is this. We expect this to be just dot one. Dot one. What we'd also expect is to get the list of indexes, right? So let uh, indexes equals query result dot zero. Uh, and then we can, well, let's see, we would know that, let's see, the indexes should also be the same length as everything else. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So if I change this to be just an assert, we can do uh, U32s is equal to that. And the U32s length is equal to the indexes that length. Okay. Then uh, we can probably do some assertions on like what those indexes are because we know entering them in here, we should have, see, we're querying for U32s and F32s that have both of them. That's this one and this one. So zero and three. So zero and three is what's in here. So. We should, we don't have to like borrow or anything else because they're just gonna be U sizes inside. So we should be able to assert equal that indexes of position zero is zero. And assert equal indexes of position one is three. And I think, I think that will give us what we, what we really want. All right, so we have some errors in here. Mainly, we're not actually returning this like list of indexes. So let's go ahead and fix that first. So now we can come up here. So in run, we have, well, these are indexes. Uh, these are the indexes of what we're looking for, right? Can I just return that? So you're being queried here. So what if I return 
you are a tuple type with a vec of u size. And then we have indexes and that. Well, suddenly there's no there's no errors. So if I run you, everything just works. Uh, if we come back to our integration tests and we run that too, that's all working as well. Okay, perfect. So what this means now is that we have access to the indexes, like the true index, which can be the IDs of the, um, the component here. So if we have this, if we do our, if we do our query now, so now we also know what this is going to be. So I don't think I need to like do the full query in order to like, then just run, you know, room, you know, add a component the way this is delete component. This is delete component from entity. Um, okay, so now that we have this, we want to do rule dot delete component um, by ID, I guess, or delete component by entity ID. So we're gonna have to give it the uh, the component that we want to delete. So in this case, let's delete the location, and the ID is gonna be zero. All right. Uh, don't I deleted. Okay, so delete component by entity ID. Now after that's done, we would expect that if we do a um, if we do a query, we're not going to get something. So let's query it's gonna be equal to dot query with component, uh, and I want location with known. Oh, uh, question mark with component. Uh, and then in this case, size, I want both of you in here. I run you. Uh, and so we can expect that the index of what we're going for is just this one, right? So zero, one. So we want uh, cert equal that query of position zero. Um, well, first of all, length should be one. So zero should be one um, and assert equal that query zero dot um, of position zero of that, uh, that should be one as well because that's the second entity here. All right, and that should be our integration test. Now that's obviously not gonna work for us because uh, we have this delete entity by ID here that doesn't exist on the world. So let's make that exist on the world. So at least we don't get these errors anymore. So in our main library, a function deletes is delete component by entity. ID. That's what it is. Um, we also know that you're going to take in a um, a generic here, so a type, so a t which is any uh, we're gonna have a mute self because we are gonna change something and I don't know if we need to return a uh, anything here um, we also know we're gonna be taking in a index so the index which is gonna be a u size okay so we're not gonna return anything and then we're gonna leave this as a warning for us to like come back to and, and fix later. Uh, but that's gonna make this test at least look like it's gonna pass. If we actually run this, we should get an error because uh, left does not equal right. Um, we got two of these items and we should have gotten one on line 95, which was 
how many of the items we got back in our query. Okay, perfect. We can now come back to query here and do our inner loop of testing. So we want, actually it's probably not query, we just want entities. For entities, uh, we want, where is, where, where are we gonna put this? Uh, we're gonna have a delete entity. I guess like delete by ID. So test function delete component by entity ID here. Um, we are going to need that type. So the type is any. Uh, we're going to have. Oh, wait, this is just a function. I don't need to do that. So delete component by entity ID. I don't think we need a result. Okay. So what are we going to do as part of this test then? We're going to, uh, we have to figure out what the ID is going to be. So we need to create a couple components inside. We need to create a couple entities uh, inside of our, I wonder if we can just create one for this test. We might be able to get away from that. So let's create a, a new entities entities equals entities default okay so once we have that then let's go ahead and we have to register some components so uh, we can register health and speed here so entities that register components health speed Okay, uh, let's now create an entity. So entities dot create entity with component. Uh, let's give it this health. That's going to be a, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. U32, 100. Uh, with component speed and let's do like 50. Those numbers don't actually matter for us right now for this for this specific test. Um, but we've now created this entity, which means the map should be three because you know, one and then one. Uh, so now we would expect that we can delete this delete one of the components and we should get a uh, the map should be updated for this. So we're going to do entities dot delete component by entity ID. Uh, we're going to pass in the type. So let's uh, let's pass in health. Health is being deleted here. Um, and then the, the index. So in this case, it's going to be a zero. And I think that's going to be it. And then we can do some assertions. So, uh, sir equals that entities dot map of position zero. Uh, that should be equal to, because this map here is a vector. So this index. Now what do we have? This is uh, one and this is two. So together the three after we delete health. So one and two. So we should just have two here. And that's it. And I think this is the only test we really need at this point. Um, what are you upset about? Uh, result or option? Oh, you need to result turn a result here that which means down here we need to return an okay all right so now all you're all you're yelling about is that we don't have this delete component by entity id function let's go ahead and create it um okay so we know we're going to take in the index uh the index is going to be a u size 
Um, we don't need to return anything, but we also need to take in this type here. So type, which is an any. All right. Now, if we run this test, we should get the failure state. And yeah, we see that the map is three, but we actually got no, the map, the map is three and we want it to be two. All right, so perfect. So we know that the tests are working correctly and we're expecting the correct thing. Now, when we update our code, everything should just start working for us. And then we can just wire up the world to call this function for us. All right, so what's the first thing we need to do to actually get this to pass? We need, we need the, we need the, um, the type ID. Specifically, we need to get the bit mask for this so we can basically do a, a minus equal. So like one of the, one of the uh, bit, um, the bit operations, the bitwise operations. So let's do, uh, do that should be, uh, well, type ID is easy to get. So that type ID. ID of this T. Okay, so that gives us that. Let's now get the bit mask. So our mask is going to be equal to self dot bit mass. We're going to get off of this key, which is going to be a reference to the type ID. Um, now, there's a possibility that we're trying to remove one that doesn't exist. So if that happens, we're going to need to go into errors and actually, you know, return an error. So uh, component never called, component not registered. Let's add another arm to this. So uh, what what are you going to be? What what's what's the error here? Um, I think it's this is the attempting to delete. Well, like attempting to really access the a mask uh, that of a component that's never been registered. So really, like we could just maybe change this to like attempting to access a component that's not attempting to use, uh, attempting to um, reference a component that wasn't registered. So component not registered is probably still good enough for us. So let's head back into here. So let's also just do like this, let mask equals, I'm gonna do an, um, if let sum, uh, this is gonna be our mask equals this. And then we're gonna just return the mask at this point so that we can stay as far left um, uh, indented as possible. And then inside of here, if it's an else, so it's a none, we're gonna return and then we do need to do a result here. So do a result. Uh, we're not gonna return anything if it's successful, but this allows us to return an error with the errors the custom errors, component not registered into here. Now I do have to put a semicolon on this if let because it is an expression at this point in time and not just a normal if. This also means that uh, down here, we're gonna have to delete component by ID. We're gonna have to question mark this. Uh, and at the very end, we also have to do an okay here. All right, so that should make you happy. Um, let's continue on. So uh, we have the mask. OK, so now we have our mask. Uh, we need to now do a bitwise operation to remove something. So let's make sure that we like understand how this is going to work, because we've used and and we've used um, or. And I think and actually remove something for us, right? Let's, uh, let's head into here and double check our, our assumptions for this. So let's say we have, um, we have something like 
I don't need these for that. We have this entity map and we have our query map. Uh, so let's change our entity map to be like, uh, I don't know, our three. And we want to take something away in the one position. So at the very end, we want this to be a two. So if I do, if I just do and uh, entity map and query map, what do we get? We get a one. Okay. So that's probably not exactly what I want because if I were to do, uh, let's see, entity map, query map, let, let's say we're trying to mutate this to be like, we want it to be a two at the end of this so entity map is going to be equal to it's t map and query map i were to do that and then we're just going to print out entity map at the end of this it's going to be the wrong value it's going to be one i think we actually want it to be the opposite uh query map and entity map if we do that Oh, no, it's still one. So it's comparing the ones that we want. Now, if we do or, is that helpful to us? Now that's still three because it's saying like, hey, is there is there one in any of these potential um, opinions, like any of these uh, positions for this? So I think what we need to do is go look at the bitwise. We're gonna do a Google search for the bitwise operators or rest. So here's just a random website that I found. Looks like it's tutorials point. And we see, okay, so we have bitwise or XOR forms a Boolean exclusive or operation in each bit. Uh, there's a not reversing all the bits in the operand. I don't know if I want a not. So and an or, we tried those. Not, we can shift. I don't know if the shifts are gonna be helpful for us. So it might be this XOR, and it might be not. Uh, I wanna try the XOR because I have a feeling that that might be what we want. So let's try, let's do NT map first. And then it's this XOR uh, query map. And let's see what this gives us. Ah, that gives us the two. So let's uh, play around with this a little bit more. If this was two, uh, then we would expect this to be one at the end. Let's run that. Well, there we go. Uh, we can try one more time. Uh, let's say that you're seven. So we have one, one, one set up here. And if we removed a three, which means we removed a one and a two, then the we should be left with four. And there we go. Okay, so I think that's exactly what I want to do. And uh, just to make sure, in case I like get myself into trouble, let's double check what happens if I do query map X or uh, entity map. I don't actually think it's going to make a difference here. It's pretty much the same. So I can't actually run into trouble as long as I'm just using the X or for this. Uh, but of course, that's what our tests are for to make sure that we don't you know, get run ourselves into trouble. So now that we have our mask here uh, and we have our index, what we can do is we can say self dot um, map of position index uh, equals. And I don't think there, there it's a good question here. I don't think that there is an X or equals. That would, that would be really interesting if I could do something like, like this. I don't think I saw one that would allow us to do that. Oh, but it does work. Okay, perfect. Well, then in that, in that case, we're going to do XOR equals and then the mask. Now we do have to dereference the mask to get access to it, um, but that's it. That should be the deletion for us, and that should now make it so that the delete happens. 
Uh, let's go ahead and run our tests and see if they now pass. And it does. Okay. Awesome. So now if we come and we try to run our integration test, we're still going to fail here, but that's because we're running this off of world and we haven't wired up the world to use the one from the, um, uh, the actual components yet. So let's go ahead and do that next. So in here, we have the delete components by entity ID. We are going to have to return a result. Uh, but we don't need to return anything inside of it. So we're just going to do self dot entities dot delete components by entity ID. We're going to pass in the T and this index. And we can just return whatever this returns. Uh, okay, so back to this entities, we have to handle this result here. Uh, but besides that, I think everything's going to just work the way we want it to. It does. Okay, so our test pass. So we are now successfully deleting an entity, a component for an entity by its index. Uh, so we we updated our query so we can get that that ID. Well, which is really just like the true index of the entity. And then we can use that to pass in a component and delete the component. But deleting the component is not really truly what we're doing. We're really just like updating our map to basically show that it doesn't exist anymore, even though that data is still there. So it's a super fast operation because we're not actually changing anything or we're changing just like our map. That means when we do our queries, we still don't get it, but we don't actually have, like if we have a ton of deletes, not much is actually gonna, you know, not much data has to change. Uh, so with that, I will uh, see you all in the next video. Bye.